Thanks for tuning in once again, guys. I got a quick video today. We're going to be reading uh, this very interesting article on some of the earliest colonists to North America, which is Sephardic Jews, Moors. And this also includes a bit of a more possible and truer history of what happened to the Roanoke colony. But before that, I want to remind everybody, we have done a video, as you guys can see on the screen, I have a video, uh, it's called Virginia's Not-So-English Colony, Sephardic Morris Jamestown and Roanoke Genealogical History. All right, make sure to catch that video if you haven't. You know, Not-So-English, meaning most of these settlers in Jamestown and the lost colony of Roanoke or Sephardic Moorish people fleeing the Inquisition. We got another article basically from another person kind of saying the same thing. These are very scholarly. They have a lot of resources. You'll see footnotes as I'm reading that you can verify and follow up on. I just want to say, you know, you got to dodge the hijack when you hear it, you know, already. To the meat, spit out the bones, all right? So let's get into uh, the article, okay? Thanks for being here. So it says here, International Social Science Review, Volume 95, Issue 2, DNA evidence of a Croatian and Sephardic Jewish settlement on the North Carolina coast dating from the mid to late 1500s. Just want to go ahead and uh, read this a little bit. It says DNA evidence of a Croatian and Sephardic Jewish settlement on the North Carolina coast dating from the mid to late 1500s. For the Sephardic Jews of Spain, the year 1492 saw one door closed while another door opened half a world away. It was the year Spanish Inquisition reached its apex of brutality, but concurrently Cristobal Colon, remembered in American history as Christopher Columbus and purportedly of Sephardic descent, set sail for the New World. The names of his crew suggest that several of them were also Sephards, or also people of color. Right. By the mid-1500s, Spain had expelled between 100,000 to 200,000 Jews, after the first season, their money and possessions. The Spanish Jews fled in all directions, eastward to Italy and the Ottoman Empire, westward to Portugal, northward over the Pyrenees to France, and southward across the narrow street of Gibraltar to North Africa. Another 10,000 to 20,000 remained behind to later be killed by the Inquisitional Court, when an additional 30,000 converted, often superficially, to Catholicism. All right? So again, we got the whole uh, story behind us, right? This is just confirmation. If their sincerity was suspected, they too were added to the bonfires of the Auto de Fe. So they were burned. Now this is a table they have here, a list of crew aboard the Nina, the Pinta, and the Santa Maria. It says here the stars have the Sephardic name. So Jerez right here, Morales, Carpenter, Palos, Perez, Martinez, Nino, Calabres, Coyard, Torres, Romero, all right, Romero family, one of the founding families of New Iberia, Louisiana. We're going to get into that video soon. Who were the uh, New Iberian colonists? The Malagueños, as they were called. A lot of them were Acadians too already. The Romeros were one of the families there. Peña, Sanchez, Bermejo, which means red. Just like the Bermejo Sea or the Gulf of California, which is the Red Sea or the Bermejo Sea. 
Entonces, Cristóbal Caro, Triana, Salmiento, Lorenzo, Diego, Perez again, Triana, Soria, Guterres, Arcos, Mendes, Vallejo, Nino, Sanchez, Rico, Ruiz, and so on. Since fallen Colon's arrival in the New World, Spain established multiple settlements in North America, stretching from the Gulf of Mexico and along the Atlantic coast, as far north as Paris Island, South Carolina, Santa Elena Colony in 1566-1587. Hernando de Soto and Juan Pardo led multiple expeditions during the 1540s and 1560s to the inferior interior of what is now the southeastern United States. Concurrently, the French crown financed expeditions and military settlements at Charles Fort on the Virginia coast. Belatedly, the English queen, Elizabeth, decided to enter the race to establish colonial ventures in this new land. Her favored courtier, Walter Raleigh of Devon and Cornwall, organized a corporation to bring settlers to Chesapeake Bay area. Initial scouting expeditions for a location suitable for a trading colony were taken by Raleigh and his Portuguese pilot, Simon Fernandes. All right, so remember, Raleigh was also one of them, not just his pilot, who was very likely of Sephardic descent. They chose the North Carolina Outer Banks area, where Fernandes claimed to have extensive sailing experience from prior voyages with the Spanish merchants and the tradespeople from London staffed the initial colony in 1585 and 1586, all right? Remember, these were all Sephardic Jews and Moors, Muslim Moors. They were hardly the sturdy frontiersmen needed for such adventure into the wilderness. Remember, and they're telling you right here again, these weren't the type of people you would use to colonize. So they, they're, again, they probably like, they don't know why they brought them, but we know it was because of the Inquisition. They were fleeing. But this paper proposes they had an urgent reason to seek employment opportunities outside of England. It says here, the first two are uh, Ro Roanoke colonists. These are some of the names here. Antonio Roos, Marshall, Glandic, Techman, Nugent, Stafford, Clefs, Walters, Gans, Brush, Fever, Bucker, Pollison, Constable, Vaughn, Bucker, Harvey, Skelabs. All right. It says this article proposes that the reason for their desire to exit England was the threat of Spanish invasion. All right. In one or two years time and their ethnic status as Sephardic Jews. In other words, if one were a conversal merchant tradesman in London, all right, if you were one of these colored people, Moorish Sephardic people in London, it was a good time to move west. All right, already many Portuguese and Bristol, England fishing vessels were visiting the Atlantic coast regularly for cod fishing, while English privateers such as Drake, Gilbert, and Greenwood were preying on Spanish silver galleons in the South Atlantic. Many of the crew members aboard these ships were, in fact, conversos, as the manifest indicate. All right. Concurrently, the same English voyages were venturing to the eastern Mediterranean, including trading in the Adriatic Sea off the coast of Italy and Croatia, and even venturing to Morocco, where both Jews and Muslim Moors had fled from Spain. All right. So, very important. Hope you guys don't get lost, but they're letting you know that a lot of these so-called Italians and Croatians, even people in Morocco. So if they say the Moroccan Phyllis, the Morisco Moroccan, she could have been originally from Spain and ended up in Morocco, not originally from Morocco. So a lot of these so-called Croatians later on that were being sent to the colonies, a lot of them were already Moors that were living in Croatia. Remember, when they got expelled from Spain and Portugal, they ended up almost everywhere in Europe especially these Protestant countries, because that's where Jews and Muslim Moors had fled from Spain. Thus, an anti-Spanish pro-Sephardic Moor maritime network, a pro-Sephardic Moor maritime network existed stretching from southeastern Europe to North America. This would have made the shores of North America, especially those above Spanish Florida, a very desirable locality for maritime merchants and traders, and also for refugee families, all right? Refugee families. Other key players in the Roanoke Ventures were Philip Amadas, beloved in Spanish, and Arthur Balowi, son of Lowi, and Hebrew, who, like Raleigh, were from the Cornwall region near Bristol, and who also extensive trading ties to eastern Mediterranean. 
Mediterranean, all right, Bristol. We're getting a lot of Bristol uh, um, from people here, right? What's so significant about Bristol? Well, Bristol and Liverpool had major black populations, so-called black populations. So in the 1700s, right, the black population of Bristol in the 18th century, Bristol branch of the Historical Association of University of Bristol. All right. We're going to get into this book as well. We got so much info. It's endless. And again, so... A lot of these people were from the Cornwall region near Bristol, right? And who also had extensive trading ties with the Eastern Mediterranean. Additional participants included Arthur and John Fasci, whose surnames indicate they were Sephardi Jews from Fez, Morocco, Fasci, Fasci, one from Fez, all right? Sephardi.co includes multiple spellings of this surname. Of the original 1585-1586 settlement at Roanoke, 15 men were left on shore under the administration of Master Kofar, a man named Chapman, while Raleigh returned to England to obtain additional colonists. The surname Chapman means traitor, merchant, all right? That's what Chapman means. It's the traitor merchant who's the merchants and is coming among the Lumbee tribe whom this paper investigates, the Lumbee tribe who this paper investigates. Interesting. These men seem to have gone missing by 1587 when the next set of Roanoke colonists arrived. So past the emotions, past what people think, we're just trying to go with history and go with truth leads us, right? So obviously, it doesn't mean that there would only be like Sephardic Jews because they would have to have mixed by, you know, especially... From then till now, we're talking about 1580s until 2000, like right now. That's a lot of mixing that happened after that. Of course, amongst indigenous people, who else is here, right? By 1587, London was teeming with foreigners. According to Quinn, many of them were in fear of their lives, running from the Spanish who had just invaded the Netherlands, where many Sephards and Moors were living in exile from Spain. The Armada was now rumored to be sailing for England within the year. From among these desperate persons, Raleigh collected his next group of settlers. They included goldsmiths, though no gold had been found along the Virginia coast. Accountants, some attorneys, despite no court systems yet existing, <laughs> a university lecturer, a tile maker, and happily for the colony survival, a farmer. So the best thing they brought was a farmer. Because none of those other professions helped out at that time. So these were just random people who were just fleeing their persecution. They really didn't need to have any much use for them. So they had to work in the farm. Didn't matter if he was a university lecturer. He had to go work under the farmer eventually. They all had to learn from the farmer, right? Go back to the basics. They also included White's daughter and son-in-law, Ananais Dare, whose first name is Hebrew for compassion of God. This unlikely group of 150 men, women, and children were deposited at Roanoke on July 22nd, 1587. They soon made friends with a young Native American man, Manteo, from the nearby Croatoan tribe. Croatoan. The colonists made arrangements with John White, the colony's leader, to carve the word Croatoan or Croatan on their fort. Palisade if they decided to move to the village of these friendly savages. While White returned to England for supplies, a cross was to be carved as well if the colonists met with an emergency during his absence. As is well known, the Spanish Armada's attack on England in 1589 delayed White's return to voyage until 1590. So the Spanish actually did attack England. So these people got saved. But you see what it was the instructions? When he left, he told them, let me know where you guys are. If something bad happens, put a cross so I know that something bad happened. Right? So when he returned, it says here, the Rona colonists were gone. The fort was in disrepair, and the word Croatoan was carved neatly on one of the palisades. There was no cross. White was joyful at this. He presumed that the settlers, which included his daughter's son-in-law and her child, were in safe hands. 
However, White was unable to locate them due to severe storms along the coast and had to return to England alone. All right. So that's the mystery of the lost Roanoke colony who actually turn out to be people of color, Moors and Sephardic Jews. Did you guys know that? That's a big thing they forgot to mention to us. But now it's interesting because we know a couple of colored tribes of America, right? We had every complexion here in America, right? We read the beginning in the video of what uh, Rafinski said. So we got people of color over here. We got people of color coming. They're friendly, right? So why wouldn't they help them survive? Why would they kill them? Or why did they start making up stories as we're about to read? Now it says here at this point in the narrative that historians differ. Some propose that the colonists were slain either by Chief Powhatan or other native tribes on the coast. Another possibility is that they were somehow located by the Spanish and killed. A third, more hopeful proposition is that the colonists merged with the Crotoan, now Lumbee tribe. All right? And that their descendants are still with us. All right? Their descendants are still with us. As Horn states, information gathered from local Indian peoples on both sides of the James River between 1607 and 1609 clearly indicated that survivors still lived in the interior of North Carolina. All right. So local sources from both sides of the James River confirmed that these people who settled in Roanoke had survivors. David Quinn, Cameron Cooperman and James Horn proposed that the colonists may have split into two groups. One group continued up the coast toward the Chesapeake Bay, where most were later killed by hostile Native Americans on the Powhatan. However, the second group is believed by these same researchers to have remained with the Crotoans, as Quinn states. We are forced to accept the fact that they became Indians themselves. They became what? They became Indians themselves. Who? More Sephardic people of color, Black Europeans. We were forced to accept as a fact that these black Europeans became Indian themselves and their children and grandchildren, holy so, as the centuries went on. They group, you know, didn't matter if they were European or indigenous, they just started grouping you and disenfranchising people by their complexion. Similarly, Horn states, as the months turned into years, most of the settlers had probably resigned themselves to living with the Indians for the rest of their lives. They blended into Indian communities, making their homes and raising families with peoples they had found when the English got them lost. Because here the colony is founded, lost, and now dwelling in Robinson County, North Carolina. The focus of this study is on the group of Roanoke settlers who may have moved approximately 50 miles inward to live with the Croatoan people, the tribe of friendly Manteo. Usually the historical narrative at this point focuses on whether the Roanoke colonists staying with the Croatoan tribe survived. However, this article is going to take a sharp departure while still answering the question and instead examining the identity of the Croatoan tribe with whom they went to live. While some sources have proposed that the name Croatoan may be an Algonquin for the taking of place or taking place, and not an actual tribal name, all right? Perhaps the truth is much more obvious. It was literally spelled out on the palisade of the departing colonist, Croatoan. This was the term used in the 1500s for Croats or Croatians. Croats or Croatians. Using DNA evidence, this article suggests that the tribe of friendly savages the colonists went to dwell with was composed at least in part of a Croatian man who had likely shipwrecked off the North Carolina coast some decades before and were likely known to be there by Raleigh, John White, and Simon Fernandez. Croatia in the 1500s. Again, earlier, we know that during the Inquisition, a lot of these Moors and Sephardic Jews, right, this was before the 1500s, ended up in Croatia. Right, so they're saying that 
Drake and all these people rallying, and all these people had the knowledge of these people shipwrecked in over here in the 1500s. So that's why they decided to go to Roanoke. So, because they already had some local help. These people that had shipwrecked had mixed in already with Indians and were living amongst the Indians. This is their, what they're saying here. Most Americans today likely think of Croatia as a small, inconsequential country, relatively poor, unsophisticated and powerless, located somewhere in the southeastern Europe. However, during the 1500s, Croatia, also known as Ragusa, was a formidable sea power, trading throughout the Mediterranean as well as with England, Scotland, and Ireland. It was several European-founded colonies in South Central and North America. In the waters of the Atlantic, the coast of Southeast, and in the Caribbean, Croatian sailors preyed upon Spanish treasure ships, right? They were pirates too. Again, don't look at them as Croatian like they're Sephardic Moors. They're just living in Croatia, just like people living in Holland, being called Dutch, just like Huguenots living in France. They're Moors. They're just called French. So Croatian sailors, they were pirates because they were preying on the Spanish treasures or the Catholic treasure ships, often collaborating with English privateers. Engaged in the same activity. Who's these English privateers or pirates? Again, John Raleigh, Francis Drake, and all these people. They were also more since the Farty Jews. We already got the drop, right? Again, a full circle. It's the same people. The principal Croatian port of Dubrovnik was the center of much of this activity. By the mid 1500s, the Farty Jews ex exiled from Spain had reached the section of the Ottoman Empire nearest Croatia as well as the Italian city of Venice, just across the Adriatic Sea. It should be recalled that Christopher Colon was Italian, possibly of Jewish ancestry. I right, thought to hijack. He was a Portuguese Sephardic Jew. His name might possibly be um, Salvador Fernandez Sarko. Thus, Italian Jews wishing to come to New World or to assist their co-religionists from Spain to do so would have been well aware of the opportunity for colonization in North America, which was by the late 1500s a safer destination than Mexico, Cuba, or South America. Notably, there were also multiple Croatian businessmen in London during the 1500s, working as part of the city's expanding international clientele of trading partners. I right, remember, it's all Sephardic Moorish people doing this. They just got tags now. They're Croatian, Slovenian, they're Italians, they're French, because they went everywhere when they got expelled. All right? Thus, it is probably from one or more of these sources that Raleigh and White learned of the existence of the Croatan colony prior to sending their own colonists to Roanoke. Croatian government archives mention a ship sailing toward North America around 1540, all right, carrying Sephardic Jews who had passed through the Ottoman Empire, all right? There's actual documents letting them know that they sent Sephardic Jews from Croatia in the 1540s. Another document makes the same claim and gives the date as 1558. In 1570, yet another Croatian is said to have sailed toward the North Atlantic coast carrying primarily Croatian sailors. All right, who's the sailors again? Which apparently wrecked near the outer banks. If this scenario, it would make great sense for the Roanoke colonists to make friends with the descendants of these earlier emigrants, one of three generations later. In 1585, 1587, it also would be anticipated that Manteo would befriend the new arrivals from England, who, as this article proposes, were also of Sephardic affiliation. If this thesis is correct, one would expect the combined descendants of these persons to have Sephardic Jewish and possibly Croatian ancestry, especially if one of more of the Croatian chips had wrecked, making a return voyage impossible. This possibility is examined using DNA ancestry testing on contemporary populations of persons who claim descent from their early Roanoke colonists, the Lumbee Native American tribe of North Carolina. It's now says the Lumbee tribe DNA study. For historians and social scientists, the use of DNA testing makes possible a paradigm shift in the Kunian sense of the term. The genetic origins of monarchs, conquerors, explorers, peoples, and populations of both the present and past cannot be ascertained if viable. DNA samples are available. 
In the cases of Rona colonists and the Croatan people, this study proposes there is such a sample. The Lumbee Native American tribe of Robinson County, North Carolina, traces its ancestry to the Croatan Indians of the of Hatteras. All right. So we're going to get into this. The Hatteras, I believe, is the original name or the original people later known as the Croatan. So the Hatteras might actually be the original people who mixed with the Croatians and been, then called Croatans. We, I don't know. Nobody knows because they say it's an Algonquin word where Croatan came about. But it sounds so much like Croatian, right? Cro 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 <laughs> But the Hatteras were actually the real name of these people, the Hatteras. All right? That's what I want you guys to understand, that part. Furthermore, the Lumbee claimed to have absorbed a portion of the Roanoke colonists in 1588. Current tribal members carry 34 of the original surnames of the colonists, as shown in Table 3. In addition, the Lumbee carry names of Sephardic Jewish origin, see Table 4, as well as surnames of Croatian origin. All right, Ronald Collins' surname is found among the Lumbee Indians. Powell's, Patterson, Reverend, Sampson, Scott, Vickers, White, Willis, Williamson, Wood, Wright, Payne, Martin, Lucas, Lassie, Jones, Johnson, Howie, Harvey, Harris, Graham, Dial, Allen, Bennett, Barry, Brigger, Brown, Brooks, Butler, Chapman, Cole, Cop, Cooper, and Dare, or Dari. Lumbee names of Sephardic Jewish origin. Chavis is in there. These, the Murmury, Diaz, Brassel, Adams, Brasier, Hammond, Hernandez, Hyatt, Isaacs, Israel, Jacobs, Lovett, Levinier, Lowry, Lucas, Bonetas, DeMori, Rodriguez, Driggers, L.C., Emmanuel, Flores, Gandhi, Grill, Harbor, Bonetas, Mark, Murray, Massey, Moore, Norris, Order, Morris, Petty, Perry, Pivia, Pivi, Farrell, Prevost, Quinto, Reigns, Reeves, Rivas, Rosier, Sampson, Sanders, Santi, Sheriff, Simeon, and Valentine. All right. Lumbi names of Croatian origin. Cannon, Craddock, Fivish, Goldsby, Gregerson, Groms, Haga, Hagen, Igler. Cobra, Camper, Camira, Koss, Scoggins, Shoemate, Sukosho, Stoller, and Wariax. Central to this paper's thesis is that DNA testing of the 2,724 Lumbee trial members will indicate the presence of Sephardic Jewish male haplo haplotypes of Sephardic Jewish female haplotypes and three male Croatian haplotypes. The Lumbee began their program DNA test in 2004 and it has continued to the present. Their website is publicly available online at Family Tree DNA Lumbee Project. All DNA tests are sold and given in the project for registered tribal members. Table 6 displays the haplogroups found among the men of the Lumbee tribe. As can be seen, only eight men carry Native American haplotypes. Thus, I suspected the Lumbee were likely hybridized early on by European arrivals, to the extent that the tribe now has only a very small element of male Native American ancestry. The Lumbee men also exhibit 74 sub-Saharan haplotypes, sub-Saharan, which likely representing common slaves and freedmen from the colonial era onward. All right, so dodge the hijack with the slave stuff. All right. The GMA haplogroup carried by two Lumbee men is most common in Georgia and the Caucasus. While GL290 haplogroup carried by 14 male Lumbee are most common in Central Asia. This could be considered partial support for the presence of Croatian men among the Lumbee. Although it's also possible that men with this haplotype are Sephardic Jewish ancestry. Among the Lumbee males, 83 carry I haplotype. These reached their highest concentration in Croatia and surrounding areas. The presence of G and I haplotypes of this level among the Lumbee support the hypothesis that a portion of the tribe does descend from Croatian sailors, most likely arriving during the mid 1500s. This would imply that Croatia succeeded in creating a settlement in the New World prior to the arrival of the English, Massachusetts, Virginia. Turning to haplogroup J1 and J2, as well as EL117, one finds there's a distinct presence of Middle Eastern and North African DNA among the Lumbee males. In fact, there are more Middle Eastern male lines among the Lumbee than there are Native American male lines. Moreover, there are 221 lines among the Lumbee men, which carry RM512R1A1A haplotype. This haplotype is found in approximately 50% of male Ashkenazi Levites, a rare case within Judaism. In addition, the majority of the male Lumbee sample carries the rv 88 suckable of the RM269 haplogroup. The subclade is most common in Southeastern Europe and found among both Ashkenazi and Sephardic Jews. The rv 88 DNA haplotypes provide additional support for ancestry from the Croatian area as well as support for the presence of Sephardic Jews among the Rona colonists as hypothesized. Thus, the hypothesis is supported for the male portion of the Lumbee database. All right. So 
if there was like soldiers coming from Croatia, they would marry females, right? Female Indians. So just like the Acadians and just like many of the conquistadors and just like many of the Jacobite prisoners and a lot of these indentured servants, they came alone and they married indigenous women. Right? The Acadians, remember, they were they had a whole program going with the Metas and Algonquin tribes, the Beltoc people up there. Um, and and down when they got to Louisiana, they were marrying Choctaw women. All right. So if you're talking about the male line, yeah, most likely a lot of these male lines might go back to the Sephardic and Moorish people. Table seven provides a haplogroup. All right. Sorry, I didn't see this. So this is a table right here. All right. So again, this is DNA stuff. How like and accurate is all this? You know, if you go, if you're into the whole haplotype stuff, well, here you go. All right. Now, who are they really testing? That's another question, right? <laughs> so, again, regarding the history, though, when we're talking about original indigenous people in the area, and when we're talking about original settlers, they straight up letting us know that these were Sephardic and Moorish people, all right? What does that translate to today when it comes to haplogroups and how they describe things? Well, that's a whole different story, right? It says here, table seven below provides haplogroups for the female Lumbee lines. There are 20 female Native American lines among the Lumbee. All right. Again, there are 20 female Native American lines among the Lumbee, indicating that the maternal ancestry of the tribe is only slightly Native American. There was 121 sub-Saharan female samples in the Lumbee Project DNA database. 121 sub-Saharan. So again, if you're into all this, this is what we, we break it down and uh, we try to see what they're really talking about. But they break down the table right here, as you can see. The other happy was found among the Lumbee women are diverse and come from many parts of the globe. Among 216 female lines are the age haplogroup and the sub subclades. This indicates a European origin. But as can be seen, several of the subclades are most highly represented in Spain, which could indicate Sephardic Jewish ancestry. Consistent with this interpretation, there are 60 women who have JJ1, J2 haplotypes, which are Middle Eastern Jewish origin, indicating possible Muslim ancestry, and the 48 women in K haplotypes, which is common among Syrian Druze and in Bulgaria. Remarkably, there are also women whose haplotypes suggest that they may have originated in Pakistan and India. These may have arrived with Sephardic Portuguese sailors who traded with South Asians during the 1500s. Additional support for possible Muslim Jewish ancestry among the Lumbi comes from 43 women who have T2 haplotypes typically found in Saudi Arabia and another 24 who have T1 haplotypes, which are most common in Central Asia and Iran. Finally, there are 56 Lumbi women who carry haplotype U5, which is most prevalent among the Berbers and Sami. All right. Again, so what West African DNA? Where's the West Africans? Hence, there is strong support for the thesis that not only Jewish, but likely also Muslim women became members of the Lumbi tribe. Obviously, this suggests that Muslims, females at least, may have made trips to the shores of North America prior to the arrival of the English. There are also 22 women who have haplotypes belonging to the I haplogroup and its subclades, which are found most commonly in the Carpathian Mountains. Their presence among the Lumbi prods us to consider if the Croatians who ventured to North America in the 1500s may have included some families as well as male sailors. This would suggest that the Croatians were intended to form a permanent settlement and not just a trading colony. So it says, Reese matches several French and Italian Jewish surnames indicating likely Sephardic ancestry, which would be consistent with their revelation of the Reese surname from the Spanish surname Rivas. Canon showed matches of persons now living in Armenia, Turkey, Qatar, and the United States Arab Emirates, as well as to several Gordon, Jordan, Jardine Garden of surnames, which are often Ashkenazi and Sephardic Jewish. Thus, this individual's ancestors could have been either Muslim or Jewish. Hayat actually means life in Hebrew, and matches for this Lumbi man in wide search showed Sephardic surnames in Spain and Portugal, as well as matches to likely Ashkenazi Jews in Eastern Europe. Now, you know, a lot of people already know, you know, the Lumbi is a mixture of a lot of things. I'm not just, you know, this is not just the first time a lot of a lot of you in the, you know, chat are hearing this. A lot of you told me already a lot of this. So, you know, this is just more, you know, and again, you know, this is just an article. I'm not saying this is definite proof or anything. Your spirit is your spirit. If you cling, if you walk around and, you, and your vibe is more of that, if they're saying, even though they're saying, 20% indigenous line, 
it might be a whole lot more than that, you know? So we got to touch the hijack big time. But even though if your spirit rocks with that and that's you, that's you, that's you. If you rock more with I'm this and I'm that, this is my land and you're not an Indian and I'm this and you got that hateful colonizing conquistador spirit, then that's what you rock with, you know? <laughs> even though you may have Indian in you too, you're just not using that spiritual part, that loving part, man. Bring it out. The American Revolution, the majority of North American colonists continued their British traditions. While those persons who were Native American, Spanish, French, or Croatian were relegated to remote localities of the continent, such as Oklahoma, Southern Texas, Mexico, Acadian Canada, New Orleans, and Robinson County, North Carolina, Little Croton Island. Its ethnically mixed inhabitants, having migrated 50 miles inland and taken their seekers with them, was renamed Hateras, and its true history overwritten with the celebration of British Jamestown. But the true ancestry of these early arrivals has lived on, rediscovered through the advance of human genetics. In New Mexico and southern Texas, the residents of counties and towns recently have learned that not only were their ancestors Spanish, they were also Sephardic Jews. The present research has shown that similar community likely existed on the outer banks of North Carolina. Furthermore, this community contained a variety of nationalities and ethnicities. The DNA of the Crotoan Lumbee tribe not only retains its Native American origins, as well as the genes of Africans such the hijack brought to the New World as slaves, so they mean all these runaways, people, indentured servants and safari using moors who were running away Huguenots, not Africans. The same tribe it also carries a genetic record of male and female Sephardic Jews. The same tribe also served as a lonely New World outpost for a group of male and female Balkan and likely also Muslim settlers who arrived on the shores of North Carolina prior to the first British efforts of colonization. Why was this not recognized sooner? There are several possible explanations. First, just as with the conversion inhabitants of New Spain, any secret Jews in Britain who sought passage to the New World would not have wanted their religious identities known outside of their group. To do so would invite discrimination and possibly even attacks by agents of the Spanish Inquisition, which at the time were actively operating along the North American coast. As a result, many anglicized their names, disguised their religious practices. This was not uncommon during the 1500s. For example, Juan Caboto became John Cabot, Diaz became Day, Fernandez claimed to be Portuguese, not Spanish, and Ferdinand Vos Olmos became Dulmos. They became what assimilating. Millions, crypto hiding, crypto. Second, entrepreneurs such as Raleigh, Drake, Hawkins, and Greenville understood the political importance of maintaining a British Protestant cloak over their settlements and ventures, all right? They had to say they were British and Protestants. But it was just a cloak. It was a matter of national pride for less powerful late arrive in England to be seen as sending competent colonists and administrators to their new world settlements. Who wants to admit using desperate refugees as one's representatives on the world stage? All right, that's how they're putting it. But yeah, a lot of them were very desperate refugees. All right, again, people of color. Of course, it also very likely that the Spanish court well knew there were superficially Catholic adherents among those they sent to the New World. Settlements, but as long as they were discreet, it was largely overlooked. Besides, why risk high-ranking, pure-blooded Spanish aristocrats on such hazardous ventures? That's a good point. Hence, questionable Catholics such as Juan Pardo and Hernando de Soto led the way to Spain discoveries in North America. Again, questionable Catholics. These were crypto Jews, crypto Muslims. Yeah, de Soto, Juan Pardo. Juan Pardo was actually a black conquistador. That's known. You can Google that right now. Spanish settled Cuba is now widely known to have harbored a colonial population largely composed of conversal Catholics, as does Puerto Rico. Why not conversal Protestants in North Carolina? All right, why not? All right, so that's uh, the end of the article. Um, I told you guys it was quick. Hope you guys enjoyed it. You guys can see how deep it is. The ancestry, you know, that's the hijack where you heard it. But in general, this is very historic. We've done so many videos 
uh, corroborating with uh, what is being said in this article. Check out my old videos if you haven't. You won't regret it. Once again, thank you guys for tuning in. Much love and respect. Pura vida. Hawaii.